Welcome to the first of our demonstrations of the Web Mashup and Metadata Scripting Language, or WIMSL. In this video, we will demonstrate how to integrate two data sources using the WIMSL text mapping editor. We have taken the liberty of populating the editor with example mappings. These examples are from two flight planning systems, one for air mobility and one for air operation. These two data sources use different models to describe flight information. The data models have syntactic mismatches, structural mismatches, and even representational mismatches. Using WIMSL, we will create data artifacts to integrate the two models. And we will create them simply by using a text mapping editor. In this box, we create the mappings between the two data sources. WIMSL uses a limited number of mapping relations. Here we use the equivalent class mapping. In the Air Mobility System, represented here by AM, you have something called call sign. In the Air Operation System, represented here by AO, you have something called call sign name. The equivalent class mapping states that these two items are in fact equivalent. The same goes for the items in the next line. Event time in the AM system is equivalent to event start time in the AO system. In the next block of text, we create the same as mappings. This mapping is used to denote syntactic mismatches. Here we state that ARR in the AM system is the same data set as landing in the AO system. In the next block, we use HasMatch to create correspondence mappings. Here we are stating that the AM coordinate system and the AO coordinate system, while not equivalent, do have a relationship to each other. And using WIMSL, we can articulate what the relationships are between those two systems through the HasContext mapping. Using HasContext, we specify a common context called GeoTrans that can reconcile a representational mismatch between the two data sources by noting their differing coordinate systems. In the next block, we use has relation mappings to specify parent-child relationships. Here we state that UTMWGE has a child entity called datum, and geodatum has a child entity called datum. The next block demonstrates enumeration of mapping. Here we show that A-10A and A-0-10A are types of aircraft. And the next mapping, subclass of, is used to create simple hierarchies. For example, this line states that latitude in the AO system is a subtype of the latitude defined in GeoTrans. Lastly, in this example, the default of mapping specifies default values for entities. 10,001 for the AO entity, group ID or WGE, for the GeoTrans entity, datum. Once we have generated our schema mappings, we have the chance to define the prefixes used in those mappings and list their schema locations. In addition to specifying these things, WIMSL allows you to define a base schema from which you can derive the mediated schema. To specify the base schema, you select the base, give it a name, and assign it a URL. In this example, we are stating that the mediated schema will be based on the AO schema and not the AM schema. That is, the starting point for the generation of the mediated schema will be the AO schema. Having created the mappings and defined the prefixes, we can now generate the WIMSL document. The WIMSL document is basically an HTML page. Like any other HTML page, 
It will have a head section where we specify that this page is a WIMSL profile. The link tags encode the schema that we will be importing. In the body section, we encode the mapping relations. Here, for example, we have the equivalent class mappings we defined earlier, now encoded in HTML. The advantage of WIMSL is that you do not need to do the HTML encoding by hand. You simply enter the mappings into the text editor, and WIMSL does the encoding for you. And WIMSL is inherently extensible. If you want to define a new mapping relationship, or map two existing entities, simply insert the additions into the HTML. By using HTML coding, WIMSL is easy to serialize, easy to manage, easy to host, and easy to use. Thank you for joining me on this quick overview on how to create a WIMSL web page.